Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge. Politicians do not have authority to negotiate away our rights. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you understand that our rights do come from the Creator. Uh, it's enshrined in the Declaration of Independence. We have inalienable rights. Uh, they are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. As such, no human being can take those away. Unfortunately, we're in a time in our country's history where politicians are so ignorant, and if they aren't ignorant, they're so willing to try to strip away our constitutionally recognized rights that come from our Creator. Now, the Constitution is not an all-inclusive list of rights that we have. In fact, Constitution is a blueprint against government, and it doesn't list all of our rights. Uh, the Bill of Rights does, uh, it, as Thomas Jefferson say, a Bill of Rights is what all citizens are entitled to against their government, showing once again that the Bill of Rights and the Constitution are blueprints against government. Now. If you're like me, uh, you probably don't identify as a Republican or a Democrat. I'm certainly not a moderate in any capacity. I'm a libertarian with, with conservative tendencies on many issues. But for the most part, I, I believe that, that liberties uh, are ours that we own. Uh, and, and with that said, you know, if you're a person who may not be a Republican but may vote Republican, you'll recognize that this is the party of the battered spouse. I don't say that flippantly. I've taken police calls where, where women have been battered, men have been battered, so I understand the importance of that, and it's, it's not a, a term that I use flippantly. But why do I say Republicans are the battered spouse? Because they act like one. Oh, don't hurt me. They want to get friendly with the media. Oh, we better vote this way or the media is going to trash us. So they want to try to work with their Democrat colleagues who want nothing but the destruction of this country. So I think that we're at this point now where Republicans, they basically know how to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. We're coming up here closer to November. Uh, by all metrics, by all measures, uh, they are set to absolutely sweep both houses of Congress. Now, with that said, we know where the political tides are shifting. There's no way that, that, that this stupid administration with all their little minions, it, it, nobody likes them. O only the true believers. Only the 30% the of the true believers actually want this stuff to continue. Uh, most of you watching this video are probably hurting financially because of inflation. Most of you are probably hurting because of gas prices. Most of you are hurting because of food prices. This is not a good state and it's entirely created on purpose. Now, with that said, one would think that the opposition party, the Republicans, would be doing everything in their power to show how distinct they are from the Democrats. However, on the issue of firearms, specifically the Second Amendment, now there's a decent chunk of them that are entertaining the idea of maybe working with the Democrats in order to bring a solution. Unfortunately, that solution includes infringing on your and my Second Amendment. Now, it's all emotion. It's all appeal to, we got to do something right now. Uh, well, I agree we need to do something. We need to stop infringements on the Second Amendment. Uh, we need to have people that are armed, willing, and able to use those firearms against violent dirtbags like we've seen in school shootings. Now, if you're like me, you're fed up with it too. I am fed up with school shootings, but why do those school shootings happen? Uh, they happen because people's Second Amendments are violated the moment they walk through most schools' doors in this country. Now, I understand there are places uh, in certain Texas jurisdictions that have enacted a guardian program where teachers are armed and they are willing and able to protect students in those schools. But in the vast majority of schools in this country, there that doesn't exist. Most teachers have to legally uh, put their guns away and then walk into school unarmed. Now, the school resource officers, uh, not that effective in many cases. Some of them are. Uh, most of them are not. Uh, now, Let's get back to the, the Republicans. I can't stand people like Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, John Cornyn, those people with Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, they all go together. They, they may as well be Democrats. Uh, and they've been in, in office for a long time. They don't represent what most Republicans believe. Now, if you're a Republican, you're one of these people that's waffling, oh, I don't know, maybe we need to do something. You know what? You need to read the Constitution. You need to read the Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. You need to get an understanding of what the Second Amendment actually is. Uh, there's very little room for any other interpretation on the Second Amendment of shall not be infringed. There's, there's no wiggle room on that. Shall not be infringed means it shall not be violated. It shall not be limited. And unfortunately, uh, what I keep hearing from many Republicans is they keep lauding so many Republicans who have infringed on people's Second Amendment rights. Guys, in my lifetime, in my 40s, okay, in my lifetime, I have not experienced a good president or a president that has not infringed on the Second Amendment in some way. It certainly didn't advance it. Let's go down the list. You know, you want to look at Donald Trump, okay? And it was Trump good? He was good in many ways. In many ways, he wasn't good. He, he entertained red flag laws. 
he entertained us. He sat down with, with Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein about this very issue, and I did a video uh, calling him out on that. So for people that like believe Donald Trump can do no wrong and he's the greatest person in the world, I think you ought to revisit that, especially after Las Vegas. So he threatened to do it. Obviously, I think he got the feedback saying, hey, you know, you may want to readjust that if you want to get reelected. Uh, many grassroots Second Amendments people tried to make that happen. Okay, let's go back. Another, uh, let's go back to other Republicans. You know, before him, what candidate did we have? Mitt Romney. Yeah, I think we figured out where he stands. He may as well not be a Republican. He may be as well be a Democrat. So I had to hold, many people had to hold their nose and vote for him in 2012. Before that was John McCain. Boy, he showed his true colors before he died, especially the Obamacare vote. So we had to hold our nose and vote for him instead of Barack Obama. Uh, before him, who was it? W. Mr. Neocon himself, Mr. George W. Bush, who got us involved in two idiotic wars that accomplished absolutely nothing other than arming terrorists in their own country, literally. So, you know, you can look at him. Did he infringe on the Second Amendment? Mm, not so much, but he didn't do anything for it either. All he let was a 94 crime uh, bill uh, sunset. That's all he did. And what about H.W. Bush? Well, gun control. No imports from China. So bye-bye cheap ammo, bye-bye cheap AK. So you look at him. And then before him, Mr. Ronald Reagan, the, the guy that so many Republicans laud as one of the greatest Republicans of all time. I think you guys forget he signed the Hughes Amendment into law in 1986. No more full auto stuff. So you can thank so many Republicans for gun control. Now, you may say, well, they're not as bad as Democrats. That'd be like saying, well, I got kicked in my left nut instead of my right one. That doesn't hold any water with me. And I don't care how many conservatives out there think how great Reagan was. The truth of the matter is the man spent like no other president before him. And then we had our first trillion dollar debt under Ronald Reagan when he tried to spin the Soviet Union into oblivion. So don't, don't say he's this bastion of conservative values. You ought to look at what a conservative actually means. We try to conserve the Constitution, conserve liberty. So if you're spending Spending money like you're a drunk with a bunch of paychecks in his pocket uh, and you want to sign bills that infringe on the Second Amendment, that doesn't mean you're a conservative in my book. So in my lifetime, we really haven't had one. We haven't had an example of what an actual conservative Republican looks like. Uh, are there good senators and congressmen out there that are Republicans? Yes, there are. They need to be recognized as such. But I will tell you, for the most part, this is the party of the battered spouse. This is the party of compromising your rights away when they don't have the authority to do so. Now, I, I think that we need to dig in on this, guys and gals. We need to get serious about having serious candidates that do honor their oath of office and don't violate the Constitution the moment that they step in the doors. I want fighters in there. I want people that get in these Democrats' faces. I want people that refuse to compromise in situations where they have no reason to compromise whatsoever, nor the authority to do so. And it's that time when it's put up or shut up time because this is the year that they're supposedly going to have a landslide victory in the House and Senate. Now, what's the point of, of getting conservatives or libertarians or Republicans into office? What's the point if they're going to fight the way Mitch McConnell doesn't fight? They're going to fight the way Mitt Romney doesn't fight and all the other people that I listed earlier in this video. But I'm about fed up with this stupid party. I'm about fed up with all of them. And they snatch defeat from the jaws of victory time and time again. And I'm getting real frustrated about it. I'm sure many of you are as well. You guys want a solution? Primaries. You know, stop electing. Like Kentucky, what is wrong with you. You have Rand Paul on one side and then you have Mitch McConnell on the other. How does that happen? Like how can you have such a loser in Mitch McConnell and have such a good senator with Rand Paul? I don't get it. Texas, same way. Ted Cruz and then John Cornyn. How is this possible? Guys, you got to primary these people out of existence. You've got to go out and do it. And if you're too busy or if you're too unwilling to do it, then you can't really complain about it. Primaries, there's a decent amount of control. There's a decent amount of leverage that you can have in these primaries. Stop electing the same people into office when they keep screwing you again and again and again. But I will tell you something and for all of you to seriously consider, look into repealing the 17th Amendment. Because direct election of senators is one of the worst things that's ever happened in this country's history. When now it's a popularity contest. contest. And if you look at it, a lot of the problems in this country, a lot of the progressive ideas like the income tax, like prohibition, like voting to get us involved in foreign wars, a lot of that comes from direct election of senators. It used to be appointed by state legislature. They used to be appointed in a state legislature and now they're just voted on by the people. That's not what that body was designed to be. The body of the Senate was designed to be appointed by state legislatures and if they did not represent the state's interest in Congress, they could be recalled at any time. How different do you think this situation would be right now if your, state, if your senator or senators did not do your state's bidding, they would be recalled immediately and they would be, have appointed someone else in their place. And then you wouldn't have guys like Mitch McConnell, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins. You wouldn't have people like that. And so we really got to start looking into that mechanism.
Anyway, folks, if you found the information in the video helpful, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media. That link is down below. If you want to learn how to protect yourself and your family, come on out to Valor Ridge and we can help you. As Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge reminding you, lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.